Cyanide poisoning. Cyanide is an asphyxiant that blocks cytochrome oxidase and impairs aerobic respiration on the cellular level. Cyanide is released through combustion of certain products such as wool, silk, polyurethane, and rubber. Cyanide poisoning can also occur iatrogenically through the administration of continuous nitropresside for the treatment of hypertensive emergency or urgency. Nitropresside, which is used to lower blood pressure, contains five molecules of cyanide per every nitropresside molecule. Cyanide is also found naturally occurring in cassava. We see cyanide in spy movies as the typical or classic pill that the spy takes to commit suicide so he doesn't have to divulge any of his secrets. And cyanide has also been labeled as vitamin B17 or latrile, which is touted as a secret cure for cancer that the FDA doesn't want you to know about. Here we see the mechanism of action of cyanide attaching to the cytochrome oxidase molecule. And again, cytochrome oxidase is the final enzyme in the electron transport chain that's responsible for oxidative phosphorylation. Cyanide is described to have an odor of bitter almonds if one were to smell it. And the classic scenario for cyanide poisoning involves a firefighter that enters into a household that's on fire but without wearing any protective respiratory gear. The firefighter enters into the household where household products have been on fire including insulation in the house, perhaps some rubber or polyurethane construction or building materials or furniture and he or she inhales that gas, exits the house, feels the sensation of shortness of breath, dizziness, confusion, ataxia, chest pain, and then collapses. In those settings, the treatment for cyanide poisoning should begin immediately. Overall signs and symptoms of cyanide poisoning include headache, nausea, vomiting, altered mental status, dilation of the pupils, tachypnea, and hypertension, which is then followed by bradypnea and then hypotension. Chest pain, cardiac collapse, and seizures can occur. To detect cyanide poisoning, lab work can be done, and lactic acid can act as a proxy for cyanide within the blood. There will be extreme refractory lactic acidosis, sometimes greater than 10, despite continuous resuscitation and treatment of the individual. The patient will exhibit on blood work an anion gap acidosis and a peripheral venous PO2. Again, remember that checking a lactic acid in the patient's blood work can be used as a proxy to detect cyanide poisoning. However, to recognize cyanide poisoning, the clinician must have a high index of suspicion. The antidote for cyanide poisoning consists of three different types of treatment. One treatment includes sodium nitrate or anal nitrate. Second treatment includes sodium thiosulfate. And the third treatment is the molecule hydroxocobalamin. In order to better understand these respective treatments, we need to go through the pathway. Looking back at what cyanide does is we see that cyanide attaches itself to cytochrome oxidase, which is the final enzyme on the electron transport chain. When cyanide poisoning occurs, it locks down cytochrome oxidase, rendering the electron transport chain ineffective. This then causes cellular hypoxia throughout the entire organism. One of the treatments is to administer either amyl nitrate or sodium nitrate to convert the body's oxyhemoglobin into methemoglobin. Cyanide has a much greater affinity for methemoglobin than it does for cytochrome oxidase. By converting the body's oxyhemoglobin into methemoglobin, we're able to essentially pull the cyanide molecule off of the cytochrome oxidase and the electron transport chain can resume its normal function. Once cyanide joins with methemoglobin, it forms a molecule known as cyanomethemoglobin, and then the cyanomethemoglobin is able to present the cyanide molecule to an enzyme known as rhodinase, which then breaks the cyanide down into a non-active form known as thiocyanate, which is then excreted by the kidney. Now the caveat to the administration of these nitrates to produce methemoglobin 
is that many of the patients you will see that have, been, that have been exposed to cyanide had likely received the exposure through smoke inhalation. Someone that receives that degree of smoke inhalation is likely to also going to be suffering from carboxyhemoglobinemia or carbon monoxide poisoning. Those individuals will have less functional oxyhemoglobin to begin with. Taking that oxyhemoglobin that they do have that's functional and converting it to methemoglobin might actually worsen their overall picture by further decreasing the blood's oxygen carrying capacity. We now look at sodium thiosulfate. Sodium thiosulfate is a substrate that's required by rhodinase to convert cyanomethemoglobin or cyanocobalamin into thiocyanate. So it makes sense that if an individual is suffering from cyanide poisoning, that if you increase the amount of sodium thiosulfate available for rhodinase, it's going to help with the enzymatic reaction converting the molecule cyanomethemoglobin or cyanocobalamin into thiocyanate. The third part of the antidote and the one with the least degree of side effect is to administer hydroxocobalamin. And if you look at hydroxocobalamin, you recognize that it's essentially a precursor to vitamin B12. When you look at vitamin B12, you recognize that the cyano aspect of cyanocobalamin is referring to a molecule of cyanide. In this case, you have an individual that's been poisoned by cyanide, and you infuse into their body hydroxocobalamin, which again has a great affinity for cyanide. So the hydroxocobalamin will effectively remove the cyanide molecule off of cytochromoxidase, form cyanocobalamin, which can then be excreted by the kidney as B12, or can travel to the rhodinase enzyme and then help release the cyanide to create thiocyanate. Overall, the most effective treatment for cyanide poisoning is the administration of hydroxocobalamin through the IV and one can also consider simultaneous administration of sodium thiosulfate and again the treatment using amyl nitrate to produce methemoglobin has sort of gone by the wayside because again it's going to be associated with the production of methemoglobin and cause methemoglobinemia which decreases the overall blood's oxygen carrying capacity.